Click below to watch the original Sins video, or to buy Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Alternatively, click the link on screen now to see the Harry Potter Sins Sins playlist. Of course it is! You can now officially transport using anything in the Harry Potter universe. One manky old boot doesn't translate to anything. Perhaps it just looks like a boot to act like a disguise. Perhaps a boot can be used for travel because of its relevance to moving about. Or perhaps this particular boot is made of a material with magical property. My point is that you don't know because the movie doesn't explain it. So saying anything can be used is a massive leap in logic. Also, why shouldn't you be able to do that? Apparition is fine and that's just casting a spell on yourself to make you move. So why shouldn't you be able to cast a spell on an object so that object makes people move? Excellent. Unbelievably convenient spell makes one wonder why there are such things as conflicts in the magic world. Help! Voldemort and the Death Eaters are attacking! Don't worry, we have a solution! What is it? Well, you see this tent? Yes, I see the tent! Well, the inside is actually a lot bigger than the outside would make it appear. We're saved! Thank you, slightly bigger than it looks, tent man! Your powers of having a tent that's slightly bigger than it looks have really helped us out of this conflict! So everyone's dead? Or did everyone escape and then they burned everything to the ground? You see, the problem with these cutaway to after the action is over shots is that they confuse the f out of the audience. All the questions that you just asked are answered in the next scene. Honestly, why even travel by water at all if you're gonna go by magical, completely submerged boat? Why don't these two other schools just have all the students take a port key to Hogwarts? Port keys don't work to get to Hogwarts, and yes, that isn't explicitly stated in this specific film. However, we do learn that Hogwarts is shielded against many forms of travel for security reasons. Also, we don't know how difficult port keys are to make or how expensive they are. Imagine you have a rich friend called Sally, and a friend with an average amount of money called Derek. One day Derek's flight home is cancelled. Derek is gutted because he really wants to get home in time to catch the season finale of Doctor Who. Sally, being a good friend, sends her helicopter over to pick Derek up, and take him home. Next time, when you see Derek taking the bus to work, you would understand why he wasn't then taking Sally's helicopter. Hogwarts has been chosen to host a legendary event, the Triwizard Tournament. Remember that clip, because it comes important later. And now our friends from the North! The North? Isn't Victor Crumb from Bulgaria? Isn't Hogwarts in England? You're completely right. Except Hogwarts is in Scotland. <laughs> Mad-Eye Moody was the only one who could stop it from raining. He was the one who did it, therefore he's the only one who could have done it, because logic and reasons. Roll credits. No one even said the words Goblet of Fire here. So what, you're sending the movie for having the thing that it's named after in it? Would you prefer a movie called Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire to just not have the Goblet of Fire in it? Jeremy forgets to sin the fact that Harry Potter is in this scene. His name is in the title, which as we all know means he isn't allowed to appear in the movie. Yeah, well, Wait, they're doing another Triwizard Tournament in three years? Then why wasn't there one during the first movie? Because it was being hosted at a different school. Remember the clip when Dumbledore said that this year Hogwarts had been chosen to host the Triwizard Tournament? Yeah, that means that Hogwarts isn't chosen for every Triwizard Tournament. It's not going to work. No! I mean, I know I for one shouldn't get to complain about audio balancing issues, but that was loud as fuck. I mean, just look at that difference. Again, I ask, why are the wands, which bond themselves to their owners and seem so f***ing important in the first movie, sometimes just not remotely necessary? Because some spells are different from other spells. Yeah, you know what? You know bloody well what. Why is it so obvious to Ron that Harry is a no-good f***ing liar? I mean, the goblet isn't supposed to pick four people, or two people from the same school, or allow 14-year-olds. Something is clearly wrong. Just because things aren't like they're supposed to be doesn't mean that Harry didn't do it. Let's apply your logic to a different situation. A security guard notices that, oh no, the vault is empty. All the money is gone from the vault. Standing next to the vault wearing a balaclava and holding a big sack of money is Harry Potter. Did uh, did you take this money? The money from the vault, did, did you take it? Asks the security guard. Well, says Harry, the vault isn't meant to let people just go and take money from it. And the money is supposed to be inside the vault, not here in this bag. And I'm not even supposed to be here, so something is clearly wrong. Yeah. I guess you're right. You can't have done it. Something is clearly wrong. If something is clearly wrong, that means that Harry Potter isn't at fault. Ah! The bird bite. Harry immediately drinks his own blood after possibly Rabbit Owl bites his hand. Owls can't get rabies. Thanks to Connor Hinson for noticing that sin for me. Why is this the one and only time in all eight movies when two people who need to talk to each other while in separate places use this fireplace phone? Yes, this is the one and only time they do it. Well, 
Except for the other time. If she uses magic for the pen and paper, why does she need an actual photographer to take the pictures? For the same reason that even though in real life we have software that can take down what you're saying as you say it, you know, speech-to-text software, we still need photographers to take photos of things. Scribing and photographing are very different skills. Earlier this thing's fire breath stretched like 30 feet or more in the forest, but now it goes 10 feet, hits a small human-sized rock, and turns back. Because physics. Here's a little known fact about fire. It can't go directly through fucking rocks. Amusing scene, but why does a school stop classes to teach students how to dance? Stopping classes to get students to fight dragons is fine, but stopping classes to teach them to dance? Now that is crossing the fucking line. Also, Hermione isn't old enough to be hot yet. Won't be too much longer, though. That's kind of creepy. And also not the movie's fault. You know the prefect's bathroom on the fifth floor? It's not a bad place for a bar. Cedric decided he needed to say that all quietly like into Harry's ear, even though that part of what he said was so fucking cryptic he may as well have not said it. Take your egg and... mull things over in the hot water. You see, that's the part you should have said quietly. The part where you gave the actual advice? Hermione has a towel wrapped around her. Now the towel is gone, and now the towel is back again. We've agreed! Reward him! Second place! Yeah. For outstanding moral fiber! Harry gets extra points for cheating. Also, the only reason you made Harry compete was because the rules were important. But now that there's life on the line, f the rules, am I right? If the only reason they were making Harry compete were the rules, can you explain what you were talking about in this clip? If we are to truly discover the meaning of these events, perhaps we should let them unfold. I agree with Severus. Wait, you mean you can do something to keep him from playing? And instead you're thinking, hmm, what's Voldemort up to? Well, better let Harry play so we can find out. Diggory's dad is here? Where's Fleur's dad? Or Crumb's? Oh, right, Diggory's gonna die here in a bit, and we need that money shot of his dad wailing over his body. Or maybe Diggory's dad is the only champion's parent that doesn't live in France or Bulgaria. Also, whenever my brother and I cross streams, we definitely got some on the floor. Ew. Imagine how he will reward me. I have once and for all silenced Harry Potter. It's now a good time to mention the inconsistency of Polyjuice Potion. When we saw it in Chamber of Secrets, it didn't change the voice of the person who took it, but in this movie, it does. Barty Crouch Jr. Doctor Who is that? That's Barty Crouch Jr. Dumbledore literally just said that. Who the f*** are these people waving at? And don't give me that they're waving at the French people on the horses nonsense, because there's no freaking way anyone can see them this far inside the castle. Um, I'm pretty sure they can see that door from there. Over 13 minutes of f***ing credits. You know you don't have to watch those, right? And that's the end of that. The sin total was 29 sins. And the punishment is, let's say, Poor audio balancing. And now, for the end segment today, I'm going to be showing you some outtakes from some older videos. I hope you enjoy. I have a different theory to offer you, sir. Yeah, 20 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Jeremy has the superhuman ability of somehow being able to count six seconds in the space of only four seconds. I mean, seriously, if you're trying to count cheekily fast to try and make less time seem like more time, it can be quite difficult to get away with it if you've got a literal timer in the corner of the screen. Perfect being does not come pre-programmed with English. You think that English should somehow be encoded into the DNA of this being? She was grown from a single hand. She shouldn't have memories of anything like language. The real sin here is that she's able to speak at all. Her name is Pavel. This information just happens to be relayed while Zorg's henchman eavesdrops with a mechanical roach. Jeremy assumes that this scene we're being shown represents the only time that Zorg's henchmen were eavesdropping on the president's conversation. But maybe, just maybe, we're seeing this scene because it's the first time that Zorg's henchmen heard something important. This guy spots a cockroach, but doesn't spot the cockroach-sized radio tower on its back? Jeremy sees this radio tower that is clearly smaller than the cockroach it's mounted to, even has a cockroach for reference, but still decides to say that it's cockroach-sized. This movie does appear to be saying that there'll be a point in the future when all cars can fly, but still need to be driven by a human being. Also, this is yet another movie that presents the notion of flying cars as something amazing and wildly futuristic, even though we already have them and they are called planes. The reason we don't use them as personal vehicles like this isn't because we lack the technology, but it's because it would be wildly impractical for a variety of reasons. Driver's licenses would be significantly harder to get, car crashes would have much higher fatality rates, they would be wildly fuel inefficient, and honestly, I don't think those drawbacks are worth it for the addition of a Y-axis. Met you twice today. Today? You mean all the shit we've seen since she jumped in his cab happened all in one day? I've just realized how prominent the color orange is throughout this movie, and it's weirded me out. Some very good words in V. Quite valiant. Vulnerable. Vagina. Vaginal. 
Vaginorific. Vibrate. Viagra. Vulgar. This isn't a sim, I just wanted to be a part of it. Movie steals the expositional documentary inside the actual movie motif from Citizen Kane. This movie had an exponential documentary inside the actual movie that... the. Fuck, this is going to be a difficult line to deliver, isn't it? To explore a society accuses months of fabricating the skeleton. Why? Because this guy doesn't know how to use a compass? Or this guy doesn't know how bones work? Or possibly because it's convenient to the plot? Because people never re Fuck. Because people never fuck. People. No one has ever fucked, so that has never happened. This is a prime example of when sentimental value goes totally wrong. Instead of buying a house they can actually live in, Carl and Ellie decide to buy the condemned house they met in and spend the first few years of their lives basically rebuilding the entire thing. I can't even imagine what the inspection for this was like, and this house has been abandoned for well over a decade. That's a legitimate criticism, but I'm still just a bit mad at you for criticizing this movie at all. How the f*** did they get down here? In the last scene they were walking along a cliff where there were no trees, but now it looks like they're walking through the thick jungle at the bottom of the cliffs. Did they cut the scene where Russell and Carl decide to take the physically impossible route? No trees? No trees? What the fuck are you talking about? I need to fuck less. I need to fuck less. I need to say fuck less is the sentence I was going for there. Say fuck less. I'm going to record that again, but without the fuck. Because because I feel like if I say fuck too much, it's going to take the power out of my fucking... Oh, God. I need to think through sentences before I say them. Also, human children are more important than birds. Why am I forced to explain this to Pixar? Jeremy, after this video, you don't get to complain about having to explain simple things to people. Doug the dog knows how to knock. Jeremy is fine with a dog reaching a level of cognitive ability that it can form complex sentences, but when that same dog knows how to knock on a door, that's crossing the line, damn it. Doug's collar is programmed with Spanish, a southern accent, and Japanese. You know, the three main languages. Yes, of course. We were shown three different voices of that voice trans- Fucking fuckity 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 And that's that. To check out a playlist of my new monthly series, click the link on screen now. Alternatively, click one of these other links. You know what? You know how links work. I'll just shut up.